Uh, when when Madhura gave a lecture at our open day, he showed us the Japna Cultural Center. Uh, I was in one of you remember that. We were curious to know more about the project, and our fifth semester students who are here are grappling themselves with a public building themselves, and there's something called a plan for now, which we have to decide whether it's a plan or not. Uh, we request Madhura to give a detailed talk on this one particular project, uh, for which he graciously agreed. The talk will be a close reading. Of the uh, of the building at both conceptual and technical level. Uh, this is a public building in the northern part of Sri Lanka, Jaffna. Just to highlight the significance of the position of the project, and also intent of this particular format is that in the age of overall information, it is luxury to listen to one building or one idea for the whole lecture, and it is a privilege that the architect himself is explaining the building. Yeah. So on behalf of WCFA, we thank. And welcome Madhura virtually to our campus. We had the opportunity to invite him before. So after the lecture, after the lecture, we will take a few few questions from the students. So we assume it will be a more interactive session. And this is a hybrid event, and request all of you to accommodate the challenges poses with the format. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Madhura. Yeah. Hi. Thank you, Kiran. Very very gracious. Um, and nice and short. Um, uh, I really enjoyed my engagement at WCFA when I first came there, and uh, so I am really happy to be able to do this. Uh, it is the first time that I am speaking in depth about uh, Jaffa Cultural Center of JCC, as we call it. Uh, and I'm, um, I've asked a few colleagues, some of whom were actually part of the team uh, on the project to, to also uh, uh, log in to this Zoom session. Um, uh, so I'm, I'm really happy that the first uh, kind of in-depth uh, reading, as you call it, uh, happens to be or WCFA. Okay, so I'll, I'll just get on with it. Basically, what I've done is I've break, broken the uh, presentation into a few segments. Uh, the first part is a kind of overview, uh, which may go over some of the territory that I already mentioned in the brief uh, talk uh, some months ago. Um, and the second part will go into further detail. And um, I'm happy to be stopped in mid-sentence if there is a burning question. Uh, but uh, if, if it suits your uh, method better, then we can do questions and discussion at the end of it. So the Jaffna Cultural Center is, is, this is what it looks like. It, it's in the middle of the kind of uh, formal part of the city, uh, the public areas of the city. Uh, and it is next to this lake called Pulukulam. But before I go to the building, uh, I thought I should make some reference to, to this way of practicing which uh, I've talked about with you before, which, which affects kind of all our work. Um, and, and the Bill of Rights for Users of Architecture, which we uh, discussed as well. Um, and we tried to satisfy the demands of, of these two parameters, sets of parameters in the way we approach this building. So Jaffna is, um, do you see the cursor? Do you see my cursor? You see the cursor, yeah. Yeah, okay. So Jaffna is up here in the north of Sri Lanka. Basically, it, it's 
uh, the northern and eastern provinces of Sri Lanka were was where the uh, civil war was fought for more than 30 years. Uh, and Jaffna being the uh, capital of the northern province was, was a theater of war uh, on many, many occasions. Um, and this project was, um, was immediately post-war. The war ended in 2009. And this project uh, was floated as a competition in 2010. Um, and we competed, it was open. It, it's a gift from the people of India to the people of Sri Lanka, particularly specifically to the people of Chatna. And it was, uh, yeah, I think some 28 or 29 uh, architects or groups competed in this from both Sri Lanka and India and we were fortunate enough to win it with what was in some sense a rather outlandish response. Um, so this this is the city if you, if you see um, what you see here the star-shaped thing is the old Dutch fort which is fairly decently uh, preserved. There's a moat around it. This is the, the sea on this side. And um, over here is the Jaffna Public Library, uh, which is the kind of most revered public building in Jaffna. Uh, and our site is right next to here. I'll zoom in. So it's, it's basically between the library and the lake, and it has aspects towards the Dutch port and the uh, sea and all the public spaces around it. So it really is in the heart of the public spaces of Chattanooga. The commercial part of the city is uh, maybe a kilometer away. So this is the public library. And as I keep on saying, and I'm sure people have heard me say it before, it is a quite unique because people in, in Jaffna have a extremely high regard for education and, and knowledge. And it is reflected in the fact that people always leave their shoes, their footwear at the door when they enter this library. So it's, it's that kind of reverence they have for it. So when we build this new structure next door to this extremely revered building, this revered place, we had to be extremely careful about how we uh, respond to it. So our references came starting with the principal reference to the uh, public library uh, and the Hindu architecture, which is very much part of uh, Chakna and the Northern Peninsula. Basically, the brief had three elements. It had a cultural museum, an auditorium, and a, a learning center for basically for the arts. Uh, we added public square, and I will talk about that a little more later, um, so that we, we arranged all of these buildings around this public square. And so that's how our building, our, our group of buildings sits in its context. So, um, so this public library is here, and it has a very distinctive uh, facade, it has a very long vista towards this side, so there's a visual axis towards it. So our site extends from here down to here. But we made a deliberate uh, statement in stepping back. You see the red line. We pulled our building back to that line. And we continued the garden of the library across into our site. So that the whole idea was A, to create continuity, B, 
to show some respect to to this uh, very revered old building so that our building in front the front part of our building is observes the same height as the uh, library and it also observes certain architectural characteristics which are going to lay there. The rest of the urban response was a towards the the lake to, uh, where we created this uh, pedestrian street uh, and then towards the rear uh, street where the building responded then at that end to, the, to that street as well. And then creating this public space in the center was very important because this public space includes very importantly uh, an amphitheater. And because this is the site of a very old, very small amphitheater which used to exist before the war uh, and which was very much a part of Japanese cultural life at the time. So we wanted to recreate this in, in, a, in a different scale, of course, but in, and in a contemporary sense. So the buildings are arranged around this public square. The, the whole idea of the public square was so that we would create um, a space for people to gather and engage in, in cultural events, but also uh, we de designed it in such a way that it has no gateways. It, it is open. It is, uh, well, so the, the buildings that wrap around, the one right at the bottom is the museum. On the left is the auditorium with its entrance here. And this is the learning facility, which uh, we, in order to accommodate all of this on the site and have a public square, we uh, decided to locate all the learning facilities in a tower. And we call it the learning spire because it aspires to, to it, it is inspired by the idea of, of the Sikara. Uh, and, and it has certain references to its shape as well, because if the, if the um, public library is, is the previous temple of learning, here we said would be the new temple of learning. So there are, uh, these are the basic arrangements on in the in the cultural museum there are uh, three floors uh, including a, a basement uh, on in the auditorium also three floors which include the seating at upper level and lower level and lobbies at different levels and the tower goes up many 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 more floors and we'll go into detail on that the a uh, response to the context was then uh, expressed or start in the alignment of the museum building with the library, which you can see here, the, the public library is on your left, and this is the museum in front. Uh, and the uh, other important thing which we did was to create a facade, uh, colony for the museum, which is like an echo of, of it's not a copy, it's, it's, it's a, like a contemporary echo of the public library building. And then the composition continues and then rises up and culminates in this learning spire. So this is this, this colonnade, which I refer to, which is now picking up the details or, and the proportions and the, the rhythm of, of the uh, public library. But the, the actual building, which is in steel, glass and timber is, is behind it. And it is separated clearly by, by a gap. 
So there is a physical gap between this kind of cloak of respectfulness which the building is wearing and the actual character of the building which is behind it. In addition, there were references in our building to the dome of the public library. This building also has a dome, uh, which you see here from the root of the two, two domes, a kind of conversation. Uh, and inside that dome, the, the light comes in, uh, which creates the central space of the museum. Um, so there's, there's, even when you're inside this building, there is a sense of relationship to the other. So the uh, access uh, points into the building would be, okay, so we have the uh, contextual responses, which I talked about earlier, and then we have the public space in the center, and the two icons, the public library, which is the old icon, and the learning tower, which is the new icon. And these uh, are then converted in practical terms into the access ways. So the ceremonial formal access into our building is over here in, in front of, into the uh, cultural museum, which echoes the entry into the public library and the same form of landscaping and roundabouts and so forth, the, the same language of landscaping is continued there. Uh, there are secondary entrances from the street at the back, which is uh, similar to the rear entrance to the library. And then the, the pedestrian entrance, which really is the primary entrance to this building, is along the pedestrian street, and people would come along that from two directions and enter into the uh, public space. And from there, there are entrances into each of the buildings. The vehicular circulation, it comes in from the top road, goes around the side and goes out this way or the other way around. Uh, the vehicular movement is, is kind of uh, concealed and given less prominence so that the pedestrian movement as a public space uh, is, is the primary way of accessing this building. So that's, that's what it looks like in reality. That's the public space at the center, which um, we planted, I think, 150 neem trees to create a shaded space which people would enjoy uh, being in. Jaffna is a very, very warm place. And this um, art wall, which is a kind of structure that people can climb up and down, which would be a space where particularly young artists uh, could come and this, that was the whole thinking could come and display their, their work um, without necessarily having to have permission to do so. And the um, public, uh, the pedestrianized street, which goes uh, from end to end and connects to this uh, amphitheater open air space, and which then opens to the um, lake on which we have a floating stage. None of this activity has happened let, uh, yet. We'll talk about that separately, but this is the intention and the stage is set for it. So the um, auditorium is uh, a 600 seat auditorium uh, with a specific uh, intention of focusing on uh, theater and uh, dance forms where facial expression is important, such as Bharatanatyam, and therefore the distance from the stage to the last seat is determined by 
the distance which the maximum distance for uh, seeing facial uh, expression and therefore it is, is wide uh, and uh, not so deep. That's the auditorium. And one of the features of, of the uh, auditorium is the acoustic walls where we uh, picked up one of the most commonly uh, seen aspects of life in Jaffna, which is this palmyra leaf fence, which you find almost everywhere. It is the most, and we, we, we tried to express the idea of something very familiar and common to Jaffna in in the uh, paneling of the acoustic wall. I'll, I'll go in, into detail later. This is uh, seen from backstage and some of the uh, uh, workings backstage. Again, I'll look at it later. Um, the learning tower, which is meant for uh, training in the arts. Uh, so there are uh, multimedia libraries, dance studios, vocal studios, instru instrumental studios, lecture halls. Uh, there's a conference facility and so forth. Um, so it's, it's placed on a podium, which links it to the rest of the low buildings. And the tower sits on top of it. In between is the cafeteria, which is a public space and which opens out to the views in, in both directions. That's uh, what it looks like. And the, the, uh, the timber screen is a very important part of this. And uh, I will again explain that in detail later. It's what, may, yeah, uh, the timber screen is what makes it work. Um, functionally and climatically, and uh, uh, what gives it its form. And this, this is the, the old icon and the new icon speaking to each other, uh, both icons for education. Um, and the intention was that we you would have uh, you could create new icons while respecting the old. And it is something, therefore, it's a new landmark in the city, which is visible from different parts of the city and uh, from across the lagoon as well. So we can go to the close reading. where I will look at each building in detail. Um, I think we're probably running a little bit late. Should I speed up or what do you think, Kiran? Uh, so the no problem, we can take your time, no, no issues. Okay. Okay. Sorry, you can, hear, you can hear me, right? Yeah, I can hear you. Yeah, yeah. We don't have a time limitation, it's fine. Yeah. Okay, fine. So just to give some um, number context, uh, the total flow area is 8,800 square meters. If you can see this screen, you can see how the uh, uh, different elements add up to that. And it occupies about one third of of the land area, uh, which is some nine and a half thousand square meters. So we start with the uh, cultural museum. The lower floor of the cultural museum is an open area mostly. We have an enclosed temporary exhibition gallery on one side. This is the entrance. This is the entrance which famous the which faces the formal entrance. So the main formal entrance is through here and then through that into the public space. But all of this is open. 
So anybody can come in from either side and wander around this. The only enclosed spaces are the temporary gallery here, the gift shop Kuma office here, and the door to the upper galleries here. Otherwise, this is all open. You will see it here. There are no exhibits, uh, as you can see. Uh, it's still waiting for that. Um, the main, main public entrance is on the right. And towards the left, you see the access to the to the, so the square. The upper level is uh, which you access through these stairs and this lift is the uh, main museum, formal museum area. And I will show later some of the layouts we did because we uh, did the interior as well, how it was divided up. Um, and one of the other things you may notice in these drawings is, is the colonnade, which is wrapping around on three sides and the gap which separates it from the actual building. So this is the upper level. It, this is still work in progress, uh, but this is the central exhibition space under the dome. Uh, and we use this, uh, again, a timber screen here with a cane uh, tat. Uh, to control the amount of light coming in. There are blinds as well for when we need completely uh, dark, uh, completely artificial spaces. Uh, that's the section. The lowest level is the service area, which has all the pumps and motors and all of that for the whole complex. And the two upper floors are what I just described to you. And the dome is, is on top. And that is the, the screen. And this is the building facing the, the uh, public square. This is the colonnade, or at least the iteration of the colonnade in, a, in our earliest drawings. Um, and this is what it turned out to be. Um, the, you can see here clearly the two buildings uh, separated the two elements separated. Um, that's the colonnade, again, picking up from the public library next door. This is a comparison of the, the, the whole uh, process of developing the colonnade was fairly uh, involved. Uh, so you see the old one on the left, which is far more intricate, a lot more detail. And we did a lot of iterations of this we we made sure that there was a, a cost item in the bill of quantities which would allow us to do this sampling and development um, and we finally ended up with with the one you see on the right this is um, during construction and i really uh, seriously considered whether we should leave it like this. Um, because it, it is quite beautiful uh, with the brick texture and so forth. Um, but in the end, um, we decided against it uh, for a couple of reasons. One is that I think it was becoming a bit of an ego trip and it was um, defeating the whole purpose of creating a colony that would respond to the public library. And secondly, I think uh, maintaining this in a public building would have been a true nightmare in our humid uh, weather. So this was part of the process of developing this. Uh, it was made out of uh, plywood, modeled out of plywood, and then uh, moved into actual masonry samples. Um, later, much later on in the process, we also did uh, on-site uh, working out of how it would be lit. 
uh, because I uh, it was a, a dilemma how how to balance the idea of, of creating a, a, a pleasing presence uh, versus not overpowering the building next door and uh, not making it look like the Third Reich as well. The gap which is so important between the uh, the two elements so the outer skin the structure is completely independent and which uh, the, so the only uh, connection between the two really is is the shadows that the skin throws on through the steel col columns um, and of course, the, the dome, which is the central space and creates these uh, interesting shadows, uh, which move according to the time of day and time of year, uh, and which is when it is lit up from inside also, it, it has a very special uh, presence. And it has this conversation with the dome of the library next door. The drawings, the actual drawings with which we worked out the final details of the uh, uh, of the dome, and uh, it was modeled on site, and uh, then built, put together uh, piece by piece. So the dome uh, during early stages of the structure. Um, now the building is enclosed and ceilings are coming in. Um, the ceiling structure, now the ceiling is in. You can see there's water on the floor because the void is still open uh, and it's finally closed now. And, and the interior is beginning to happen with the uh, structures for lighting and so forth. We also designed the uh, furniture, um, display units of different kinds for the lower floor, which is an open floor, which were cement, concrete, uh, pre-cast elements, and uh, then different ones for the enclosed galleries. Uh, one of the great challenges was designing uh, museum furniture without a brief, without a museum curator, without anybody telling us, being able to tell us what was going to be displayed there. And to, to this date, there's nothing displayed there. Uh, this was the lighting structure, which is suspended. Uh, from the ceiling so that it brings the lighting down to the correct level to light up. The only things which, uh, only exhibits which are there are the, our original model, which we uh, handed over. Other than that, the museum is empty, sadly. So that's uh, what it uh, looks like from the inside. The auditorium has uh, 600 odd seats. Uh, the majority of the seats are on the lower level and the balance seats are on a balcony. This explains that. Uh, this element on the left are the entries. So at the lowest level is the vehicle entry through that driveway along the side. Uh, the middle one is the entry, the pedestrian entry from the public square. And the top lobby serves the, the seating on the upper level. And the idea is that these lobbies themselves could be used as separate function spaces, uh, independent of the auditorium. 
And on top of this, we have spaces for all the services, the air conditioning equipment and all of that goes up there. Uh, I don't know whether you can see the drawings of the air conditioning ducts going under the balcony and inside the ceiling and up into this terrace. Um, so this is the uh, auditory messages now. But to get to this point, um, first it was the structure with the large span roof. It's, it's a lightweight roof. Um, and then uh, bit by bit, the, all the scaffolding started to grow. In the, in the beginning, we were quite excited because we could sense the volume. But later on, it would be completely uh, filled up by all the scaffolding. So, uh, at this point, it became impossible to visualize the space. And we had to detail out the ceiling and the acoustic wall panels while the space was like this. That was really tough because we, you, although we had drawings and models and all of that, to actually visualize how this was going to be at this scale. Uh, was impossible with this uh, forest of, of scaffolding which occupied it. So this basically was the, the layout for the ceiling so that the ceiling panels would get picked up by the, the wall panels, the, the separations, the lights. So we went from this to this. So you can see the uh, wall panels picking up the ceiling panels so that there are gap lighting gaps in between. And then the, the of course, the seating came along. And the uh, backstage, the, the separation between Particularly, I think because of the, the color difference and the lighting difference in this, it's quite evident in this picture. It's just like you've drawn a line through this space. The, uh, the audience part and the stage are like totally different uh, uh, entities. This is from further backstage. Uh, and we, we had a very good... Uh, theater consultant, a lighting and a stage consultant who worked with us. So there are 16 uh, pulleys, sets of pulleys, which move the scenery up and down and all these curtains and, and so forth. So it's, it's, it's a very, very well equipped auditorium with a very good sound system as well. And uh, a great pity that nothing has yet been, uh, it's not being used uh, in any, any justifiable way. Well, this this structure here is is the uh, place where all the, the catwalk, where all the uh, lighting is fixed, which so the lighting operators would work from here uh, when the performance was being staged or, or when, a, when a performance was being designed. Uh, when, it, when it's being staged, they would just control it from the control. The acoustic wall panels were a very special feature and something uh, we worked very hard at. Um, and the idea was to, as I said, to pick up the, this very uh, common, uh, familiar idea of the Palmyra leaf fence and to translate it into this uh, panel. So the first, the, it was a very, very involved uh, process. So the first thing was to translate this three-dimensional element of the leaf into a two-dimensional uh, pattern. And then to 
work out how much perforation you would have versus uh, how much solid area because that affects the uh, acoustic qualities of it and how to express that in terms of the graphing. So it, it went through so many different permutations. And then once, once that pattern was established, then we had to go into very great detail so that we had to generate CAD drawings for every single panel, every single perforation. And, uh, and then we had to try it out with different materials, different colors and textures and different ways of drilling through this, whether it was completely drilled through or halfway in, into the plywood. Uh, these are the sample panels that uh, went up with using different colors. And uh, yeah, so in the end, this is what came out. It's something we feel quite happy about. Um, done by an excellent group of uh, craftsmen from uh, Mumbai, actually. The learning tower, um, in the base, in the, it has, so basically it has an entrance from the rear street on this side. The entrance from the public square goes up to the first floor. And you get admin and officers and stuff. That's on the ground floor. So that's your entrance. So the entrance from the Public square takes you really up into the active areas of, of the building. Whereas the entrance from the rear street, which lead you, would lead you into the kind of offices and the reception and so forth. So this is the next level where you get the uh, conference facility and then from there access to the upper levels. That's your... Uh, that's your stairway leading up, which incidentally is inspired by the steps of the chariot house of the uh, Hindu temples. Um, on top of this, you have the cafeteria, which is on two levels, uh, a mezzanine and a double height volume, and which opens out to the surroundings on all sides. And then you get the um, next level. So the, on two levels, we have uh, what was designed as a multimedia archive, um, which has this uh, gallery kind of space where the intention is that you would have a lot of display space around this with which you could hold exhibitions and so forth. And then other spaces for a study and, and library space and so forth. This is uh, the same thing uh, during construction. It, uh, the, uh, it needed a fair degree of precision and uh, it wasn't always easy. You can see that the, uh, the point of the triangle is not meeting the center of the uh, cylinder, so there was a lot of back and forth. And then above this, we had two levels of lecture hall. So basically, the arrangement was that you would enter on the lower levels and enter into this service core. There were two lifts and the staircase. And on each level, you would have one set of toilets. So alternately on each level, male and female toilets, and a big duct here, which was divided over here, a big duct, which is divided for electrical data, water supply, and uh, sewerage, and so forth. These are those levels. So here you see the idea of the timber screen and what it does to control the uh, climate. Um, basically, it's very simple. The building has very simple aluminum sliding windows. The timber screen creates a shadow and shade and allows the air to pass through because it's it's right next to the sea and the lagoon and there is plenty of breeze at all times. Actually, the 
problem is controlling the breeze rather than uh, needing to drink it. So even uh, there are fans here which haven't hadn't been fixed at the time of this picture, but uh, they're really not necessary because there is such a lot of breeze. So the, these are the lecture hall uh, levels. And then three levels of studio spaces. And this is one of them, which is the dance floor. So therefore we have this timber floor and the seats, the windows are, are defined into seats so that uh, students can sit around while while rehearsing or, or being taught. And it's a very bare bones building. All the services are exposed. And right on top, there is a public exhibition gallery, which uh, would be like an exhibition gallery, a public one for the whole, whole city, not just for this facility. So we created these uh, steps on either side so that people can sit on the floor and watch a performance or a lecture or something. Yeah, and it opens to balconies on either side from which you have really stupendous views of the city. And a roof terrace on top uh, where you, all the services are housed and on top of which we have solar panels. Um, we, we, we can generate enough solar energy here to run the, uh, this, the non-air conditioned parts of this building, which is the majority. So this section uh, basically explains, you can see on, on the bottom left, the steps coming up from the uh, from the public square on the right, the entrance from the rear street to the lowest level, uh, the cafeteria here on two levels, open to balconies which look out in both directions, and then the various levels going up. And the timber screen, how it originally, we, the idea was that it would be a slanted screen, but we developed it into this stepped screen, mostly for functional practical reasons of how to build it. It wasn't the easiest thing to do, uh, but it, it's, it's a remarkable piece of uh, construction, very, very beautifully done. Uh, and it moves steps down and I will show you a little more detail about how it was built. So the, the wood that is used is Finnish pine wood, which uh, has a natural protection. It creates a natural coating around itself when it weathers and comes with a 25 year warranty. Uh, so the, and it is made, it was made with, this is the sample panel, which was made as a set of panels. And we tested the, uh, it for the lighting quality, both uh, inside, how, how the lighting felt. And uh, yeah, this was the tower without the screen and you can see how absolutely awful it looks. So uh, I, I was always very, Concern that at some point somebody would say, "Why don't we drop the timber screen? Uh, it's so expensive." Something like that. But uh, fortunately, it didn't happen. Yeah, this was how the screen was put together by this team of craftsmen again from Mumbai um, as a set of elements, uh, a repetitious uh, module. Uh, using, uh, you can see they're using uh, a very simple way of, of achieving the uh, modular repetition. And so each panel was only this size. It was something like three meters by three meters or a little more than that. And it was fixed. The key thing was that it, it was fixed solely from the inside. So there was no necessity to have 
huge amounts of scaffolding surrounding 12 or 13 floors of building to fix from inside and it can be service repaired replaced also from the inside it was fixed using these uh, stainless steel uh, brackets top and bottom in modules of this size which you see so it is simply a repetition of that except at the corners so we tested it with the lighting uh, both the internal lighting and the external lighting and then uh, it's they began to put it in place from the top down you see it happening and the last things of course to be finished were the corners So it's, it's this kind of uh, transparent uh, or a shimmering kind of feel that it has to it. A uh, little bit about the landscaping. Uh, the public space was, of course, the most important thing. There's a lot of planting that went into it. Uh, plus the exist there was a whole set of existing palmyra trees which are again a very very strong feature of Japna uh, which are along this uh, public promenade uh, and and the continuation of the landscaping style of the library in, into this front former garden. Um, a lot of detailing to to make it actually happen and get the levels to work and the, um, the open steps which form an uh, open air theater so this is the uh, public square these are the steps going down to the to the water which uh, form an amphitheater, an open air amphitheater, so that there could be performances here on this street, uh, also on this floating deck. This is the ramp access, uh, the seats built, built in with the planting. So the uh, landscaping is really important because when the building goes to ruin, as things eventually do, it will be the landscaping, which is the saving grace that hides, it, hides all our mistakes. So the steps of the amphitheater, this is the um, ramp access. and uh, the uh, pedestrian uh, access which opens to the lake. This is the landscaping work in progress. Um, the trees were transported, uh, root balled and, and planted in these trucks. And it was a long and painstaking process to see them start to grow. The uh, art wall, uh, which was a very important part of this, is uh, it, it basically occupies the blank wall, side wall of the auditorium, so that it creates spaces for people to move through and uh, interact with art, which hopefully young artists would one day bring to this place. Um, the pedestrian uh, street, the steps going down to the water again, and the uh, very, uh, again, a very clever group of uh, people put together this very simple uh, floating the stage with uh, uh, PVC barrels and stainless steel chipper plate. And it has a mortar as well to to it around. The 
the landscaping uh, after all of that looks pretty sparse from the sky, but uh, down on the ground, it feels reasonably well established. So um, I'll just run you through a little sequence of uh, how it was, how it came up. One of the earliest things we found on the site was this unexploded uh, shell from the wall, uh, which was a good reminder of where we were and the ground we were treading on. Uh, I would have loved to keep this, but unfortunately the contractor handed it over to the police. Um, I took a series of pictures from standing in the same place uh, throughout the construction. You can see that, that the front building is up and the building at the back is just beginning to come up. You can also see that the trees have been, the Palmyra trees have been pruned and they're kind of just sprouting new leaves. Uh, so you can see both of them growing now and building in front is getting finished. The one at the rear is, uh, has the structure around the terrace, the service terrace, finally. And uh, the screen is beginning to come up at the back. Final coat of paint going on in front where the screen is complete at the back. And the landscaping is happening now. The final planting, final pruning of the palmyra trees, which are now looking much healthier than they were in the first picture, and right at the end. So if you think we're okay for time, um, all of this was the whole process of building it was quite uh, demanding and took a, a large team of people, a lot of time and effort. Uh, and there was a project management team on the site which produced this humongous uh, reports, monitored and produced these humongous reports every month, uh, which would talk about critical issues, time overviews, cost overviews, labor, machinery, weather, uh, and of course the uh, ubiquitous bar chart, which uh, kept track of things. The project was supposed to take 30 months, it took uh, about a year more. And I, I, I mean, all of this was done by a huge group of people, starting with the architects who, from our studio and groups of engineers and, and contractors and subcontractors. And so over a very long period of time, three to four years, and uh, but I think we, we enjoyed the process along the way. Um, the, the postscript I want to add is that the building was completed in March 2019, that then COVID interfered with completion of the last few things like the defects and so forth. But it's been ready since March 2020. And uh, it's been empty. The uh, central government, Sri Lankan central government, and the Jaffna Municipal Council cannot agree who should run it. There is a political tug of war, and the Indian government, which has to hand over the building to somebody, is unable to hand over, and they are continuing to fund the upkeep of the building. Um, unfortunately, it 
upkeep alone will not suffice for things like the very expensive equipment in the auditorium and when they may already be too late for some of those things. So uh, it is uh, probably the story of my country, the place of great potential and uh, which we are always able to screw up in supreme way. Okay, thank you. Uh, yeah. Uh, Thank you for that wonderful lecture. And uh, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you for the lecture and and the, our request of doing one building in detail versus showing you a lot of buildings. And you have taken a lot of effort to put all the drawings and construction sequence, which is a rare in academic form to see a, a lecture like this. So that students, I hope, get a sense of not only do the timber screen if they reach the timber screen stage, and also how to construct it. There's a very good combination of both conceptual and technical like we spoke. So I'm going to open up the platform for the questions to ask students to ask some questions. Uh, meanwhile, I just wondered if you can touch upon one or two dimensions of the site so that the students get a say, scale of the project, like maybe the learning center size or something for the site dimension. Okay, I'll have to go back to the drawings to do that. Uh, no, I'll, I'll just look at the drawings. I won't put it on the screen. Anybody has, anybody has any questions? Any detail you want to ask or check something? Hello. Yeah. Hello, sir. Yeah, introduce yourself. Good afternoon. My name is Deepa. Hi. Um, I, I, I was wondering um, why the, the gap between the facade and the wall of the building uh, was so important in the museum. Uh, okay, right. Um, so the question is, first of all, we wanted to do a building on that side, which would be respectful of the public library next to number one. But if we had done a building which completely behaved in, in that, within inverted commas, respectful manner, then we would do a, we, it was difficult to do a building which was of this time, of its time. So we would have ended up doing a building which is trying to mimic the, the uh, public library, which is absolutely not the intention. Therefore, it is like you are wearing a respectful cloak in the presence of this respected uh, entity. Uh, so, and to separate that cloak from your real uh, essence, therefore the gap is, is very, very important. And I feel that the, the idea of the, of the screen, of the facade, of it's a, it's a very often used technique, not only in architecture, but in, in social interaction, that you, you wear something in front of, of your face. You, you hide yourself uh, out of respect and, and uh, maybe out for other reasons as well, but in this instance, out of respect. So um, therefore, it was very, very critically important, I felt, that the two are separate. All right, so I'm wondering, how did you settle or arrive at the specific dimension of that gap? Because I don't think a human being can walk in between. So. Uh, no, you can't walk in between. It's just why it's probably about a foot, um, 300 millimeters, just wide enough to uh, 
repaint it maybe one day. Uh, uh, so that that was the defining uh, parameter that you should be able to service it. Thank you, sir. Uh, any other questions from you, Mr. Yeah. Good afternoon, sir. My name is Ayushi. Hi. I wanted to ask how you arrived at the decision of leaving it completely open. Like, there's obviously a lot of challenges that come along with because even the museum is, like you said, at the ground, completely accessible to anybody who comes there. So without any sorry, no, I, 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 can you repeat it a little bit slower? So, like, there is a decision to leave the entire site completely open, and some part of the built as well, where the, the ground floor of the museum also is completely open, as in accessible yes. without any restriction. There's obviously a lot of challenges that come with leaving the ground completely open inside as well, inside the built as well. So how did you arrive at that, like, is it a feasible choice to make? Like you said, because there's a lot of maintenance that comes along with it as well. Yes, so, so the idea is that uh, this should be a public space, a democratic space, movement towards opening up public spaces in Sri Lanka, uh, in, in Colombo after the war, that a lot of public spaces were opened up and uh, boundary walls were torn down so that uh, it, there could be free access. But of course, the essential parts, there was a door beyond which you could not go. It is the same thinking now taken to uh, another level, particularly for Jaffna, which had been under the under military control for such a long time. Uh, this is this is a very strong statement to say this this is where the people uh, the keys belong to the people. Uh, nobody can lock them out. One more small question. There's this, in the learning spire. There's a small staggering in the facade. Is that using the timber screen or is that the structure itself? The uh, stagger is with the timber screen. Yes, yeah. the the building itself is, is the same size throughout, except at the podium it it thins. But after that, the tower is is the same width throughout. The stagger is uh, achieved by the timber screen. That's it. Thank you. Sir. Thank you. Any other question? Hello, sir. Uh, I'm Raya. My question right. um, now, Jaffna being such a hot climate, uh, you open the whole facade using large openings, but then there's like a timber screen. So, is the timber screen being used as a jali? Because um, in the pictures you show, there's a lot of sun coming into the building. So, how is the heat? Um, you know, taken care of because of it's a because it's a hot climate. So the the timber screen creates so much shade. So it, it's that less than fifty percent of the surface is finally open, uh, and and the shadows which are continuously moving therefore cast the shadow on different parts. So even the glass surface, the same spot does not get heated for long because the shadows are, are moving. And uh, so that creates the, the, the shadow element which gives the protection. It's, it's a very, very cool building to be inside. And because the screen gives you protection, you can leave your windows open and, and the wind blows through. So, um, yeah, so I, I'm a great believer that in our part of the world, uh, the climate, I mean, we, we don't have a climate like in, in the Middle East or like in, in northern parts of India. Um, so um, su southern India and Sri Lanka have the ability to cope with the climate in less uh, less black and white terms. 
So it's you can modulate it uh, using elements like screens and uh, tree shade and so forth much easier. Uh, so we the, the, this climate we have is really a gift to us, and we we don't necessarily need to retreat inside and shut the door and not look at the east or the west uh, the way um, I was taught in in Bastia. So uh, are these timber screens movable like the doors? Are they movable or are they fixed? Like are any of them movable? Originally, I had the idea that they would be movable, but in, in the practicalities of detailing it, we decided to keep it fixed. But you know, essentially, we, we find that it's really not necessary to move it because Moving it means that you're letting in more sun and heat, uh, whereas enough we are getting enough sun uh, the way it is now. The only reason you would want to move it would be to let in more light, uh, but there is enough light now because it bounces off the floors and so forth. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Any other questions? Amir, next. Good afternoon, sir. So I have Hi. a question regarding, uh, was there any specific structural system used to the building? Sorry? Uh, so I had a question regarding if there was a specific structural system used in the building. Um, no, it's it's a very simple column and beam structure with a uh, um, foundation that is resting on. It's not a pile foundation. It's with large footings uh, because there's a layer of limestone underneath. Uh, so uh, the water table is about uh, two meters two meters below. Um, so it's um, no, there were no. Uh, I mean, we, we had to work to achieve the large spans in the auditorium and so forth. Uh, and in the in the uh, tower, we have the clear span, but it's a narrow span uh, so that we have the clear spaces. Um, so really, um, I mean, it was a competent uh, structure, but uh, nothing special there. Yes, sir, thank you. So, also, would it be possible to share the drawings that you submitted for the competition, the presentation drawings? Yeah, it is possible. Do you want to see it now? So, whatever is whatever is good with you. No, I, I if, if you give me a few minutes, I I can uh, open that file. Okay, so thank you. Student question, yeah. Hi, sir. My name is Madhav. So, my question was, uh, um, what was the first initial and very strong idea or decision you took for this project while designing? Like, in the respect of a public building, like one strong overall game of the that you gave from your side to this project? The first major idea you're asking. Yeah. The first and most critical idea, I think, was to pull the building because we could have, if you remember that drawing, our, our site extends far beyond where we have stopped the building. The first and most critical idea was to pull the building back to that line so that there's a continuity of the public space, the garden space in front of it, and a continuity of the line of the uh, library building. That is the most critical. Everything else stemmed from that. So the idea of then, okay, so we have lost one third of the site. Where do we put the floor area? Uh, so which led to the idea of, so why not a tower? And then what kind of tower can it be? How can it be such a tall building and be respectful of the building which we are trying not to overpower? And then, how do we create a public space to, to relate to all of this? So that was the kind of sequence of, of uh, decisions, as it were. But the, 
first and most critical one. And we knew because the competition brief said that we must be respectful of the uh, public library building. Uh, and they said, for example, for example, by observing the height of it. So uh, they, they were giving a hint, but they, they did not have a, a rule saying you, but uh, if the judges had taken it as a rule, we were in deep both. We, we would have been out. So it, it was a gamble and it was a very, we knew it was a huge risk. It's either, either we win the competition or we get thrown out on the first day. So. Any other question? I, I think the questions are over. I will wait for a few minutes, sir, if, if you to find your presentation times. Okay. Okay. Um, I have the answer to your question, uh, Kiran. Uh, the yes. power, the Upper part of the tower is 24 meters by 12 meters. Okay. And the base is about three and a half meters wider than that. So the question came because uh, we, are, we are doing some large span structure. So everybody is saying eight meter, 12 meters. What is a good sort of uh, proportion of buildings in that context? I asked that question. So, so the, this one, um, I mean, we, we could only have one uh, space per floor. Yeah. Uh, uh, and you have the two, uh, you have the staircase, the service core on one side and the fire escape on the other side. Yeah. Yes. So it's a 12 Yeah. Sorry? It's a 12 meter span. That's why you put. Uh, yeah. Span. Yeah. Yeah. So we, we had a clear span of 12 meters. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. So big, big columns along the periphery. Yeah. And, and a very thick slab. Yeah. Um, I can share the uh, competition drawings. Yes, sir. Yeah. Can you see that? Yeah, yes, I can see. It. Yeah. yeah. So, um, yeah, so this, this was the drawings explaining the response to the context and this relationship to the uh, uh, public library building and the idea of, of the public square and the pedestrian street. So, uh, and, and the replication of the garden form. So it's, it's fairly, uh, uh, I think we were extremely fortunate that we were able to carry through uh, largely intact the original idea. Um, this was, you can see that it is fairly similar to what we finally achieved. The, the competition drawings, uh, it was one of the rules that it had to be black and white. Maybe the shape of the auditorium and, and the seating was a bit different. And the tower is it's largely uh, the same thing. The idea of the, the dome uh, in the uh, museum and the screen. Of course, we, we during the, when we developed the design, we wondered whether uh, timber was the right way to go or whether we should look at other things. But eventually, we stayed with timber. Uh, you can see in this in this picture that the colonnade was a far more kind of a, a, a replica of the. Uh, public library and um, and I'm grateful that one of the comments we got from the jury was that perhaps we should be uh, more uh, abstract in, in that interpretation. That's something we took forward.
it's just the idea of, of the uh, sustainability strategies, including the natural ventilation and uh, light in, in the tower and the ability to derive all, all the uh, energy needed for that building uh, from the solar panels up there. Yeah, um, I, I hope that answered uh, that question. I, I, I would like to know why why she asked that question. I'm going to answer. Yeah. Hi, sir. Um, so I just wanted to uh, enjoy a good way to present our designs. I thought so has won a competition. Maybe that's a good start to look up to. Uh, that and I the difference between the actual building and what it was presented as the development. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Okay. Thank you. So, so th thanks a lot. Thanks a lot for uh, putting up this lecture for us and also taking time. And this has been a wonderful. Uh, students are one month away from the final drawings. Then uh, the end of December they review. So we hope we are this lecture becomes becomes a catalyst for them to look at the building more closely. Uh, so thanks, thank you for the lecture. And on behalf of WCFA, we thank you a lot. Yeah, and we look forward. Thank to you. Week. Yeah, Thank sure. you. It's been a pleasure. I, I actually used the opportunity to put together all the information regarding this, which I've been planning to do for some time. And so it, it served a very important purpose for me. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. you. Yeah. So we one. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you.